Welcome along to another video, something a little bit different. This is a Fender Mustang 1 guitar amplifier, so a lot different from the usual radios and test gear I get in to fix. This one I picked up at the NVCF yesterday for £20, which seems an absolute bargain to me. The seller said it was working, um, but he hadn't got a guitar or anything to plug into it, so I assume what he really meant was he'd powered it up and he could hear the same sort of humming noise as you can now. Now, when I got it home I didn't put my uh, guitar through it, um, but I could hear this sort of noise, which is some of the, the onboard effects working. So I just assumed the amp was working absolutely fine. However, when I went to plug my guitar into it, absolutely, absolutely nothing. So, every now and again, you should get like a humming noise, like a, like a buzzing noise when you touch that. So every now and again, there. And as you can see, I'm having to hold, hold the jack. So I suspect there's a loose connection on the jack plug and that's what I thought purely down to the fact that the amp was working but the, um, the input wasn't obviously getting through to the amplifier section. Um, so that was last night. This morning I had a look on some of the guitar forums and stuff and the jack plugs on these seem quite uh, a common problem along with the headphone socket as well I believe but uh, I haven't tried that yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the amp up um, and have a look at the jack plug. It's mounted on a PCB, it's plastic which is never very good and uh, it's probably got lead free solder which is bound to crack and go nasty. So we could have a loose connection, uh, the spring contacts could, could have gone inside the switch. I do have spares in stock. Um, so let's crack on and get the amp open. Right now to get the amp open you undo the screws on the back and I understand that it's glued and uh, one way we unglue stuff is to stick a screwdriver in there and pull it out and there we go, there's the back so I'm going to take some photographs of which way the wires are connected up especially to the mains here um, and then we'll take these four screws out so two on the handle and two here um, there's two screws on the front I'm not sure what they do uh, we'll have a look in a minute right here's the inside of the amplifier or the back of the amplifier you can see the connections I've prized off from the IEC plug speaker connections speaker frames earthed um, what I'm going to do is just check some of these capacitors in this power supply just before we take it out just make sure they're not bulged it looks like a Panasonic there just, this will be the switch mode power supply here and you've got the input PCB which is the problem that thing there and you've got the processing and control board here which I don't want to touch really so that's just a, a view here of the underside of the amplifier section right here's the amplifier section out of the cabinet it's quite difficult to get out actually even when you've undone the four screws as I said I think they must put a bit of glue on these pads and you have to really push down to get it out now as this is not one of my usual videos and there might be some younger uh, musicians watching you make sure you do all of this with the mains power unplugged from the wall socket you do not work on any of this with it plugged in because it can kill you this is the underside of the amplifier now this is what's called a switch mode power supply and in the UK from these wires we'll have 240 volts coming in here so all this you consider as dangerous and it is even when it's unplugged these two 
big things here which are electrolytic capacitors these are rated at 200 volts and they might still hold a charge so just be careful right as I've not been inside an amplifier for at least 25 years this one's really shocked me <laughs> the last ones I had were out here somewhere full of bits and pieces and transformers and stuff this is tiny but it puts out 20 watts so the board we want to look at is this one here this one contains the two plastic sockets jack sockets here now I've seen another guy who pointed out some solder cracks around here on these joints and I'd suggest that's where my problem is so I'm going to look under a magnifying glass because of my old eyes and we'll have a look if we can see anything wobble so I'll get back to you when I've checked that out right I've removed the jack plug PCB all you do is undo the two plastic nuts and then push the PCB through and then pull off this clip here which is actually glued but you can just pick the glue off and pull it out now I've had a look under my um, lens and I'll zoom you in a bit but I don't know whether you can see hopefully you can excuse the wobble that this one's cracked you can see it and also this one is also cracked so it's making intermittent contact with the PCB track so I'm going to get some leaded solder proper solder and I'm gonna reflow these joints here and hopefully that will fix it at some point I may just hardwire the whole lot in but we won't for now and that thing there is a tiny little capacitor that goes from your input down to ground right here's the board all soldered up again reflowed those joints with leaded solder and all the cracks have gone now we're going to put the board back in to the amplifier section now the PCB is ready to go back in the amplifier so you just plug in that connector there it's a one-way connector you can't plug it in the wrong way around and there just push the sockets through now before you uh, put the amp back in the cabinet let's give it a quick clean up just to get rid of all the dust and dirt that's got up under the cabinet and we put the nuts on these are so bad <laughs> so and then the amp section is ready to go back in the cabinet she's all working again I have to say the design of this PCB board that supports these two jacks here is is not good um, the track um, if you imagine that's the through hole onto the um, track side of the PCB and if you imagine that's the leg of the uh, jack socket or you know one of the six legs it comes through the hole, through the through hole, and then there's just two little 
tracks either side, maybe two or three millimeters wide, leaving all this, all the rest of the area, um, not not actually attached to the leg. So of course any movement here just fractures the uh, solder joint, um, especially with lead-free solder. That lid off a packet of Q-tips is probably not the best representation of a through hole, but there we go. But yeah, there's there's not a lot for the for the leg of the jack socket to actually uh, grip onto here, and certainly not. You know, you got um, you know, people. This is this is an amplifier. You got people doing this all the flipping time, running it in, not putting it in right, up and down, and the PC board B board is only held on by these plastic nuts, and they're not exactly rigid. So, bad design, lovely amp, it's got a great following, uh, so I've read on, online, it's many years since I've bought myself a, um, a guitar amp, but uh, really pleased that this one, um, this one works. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, remember, if you're working on this um, and you're young, you haven't watched my videos before, you unplug it from the mains before you remove the back cover. Very important, otherwise, you're going to zap yourself. Um, but anyway, I hope that helps a little bit. Um, I'm actually, this is just a personal thing, I'm going to take this board back out again and I'm going to solder some extra wires in um, because I don't think it's good enough. And I'm also going to get some metal nuts for here just to make it a little bit more rigid but these plastic sockets are uh, pretty useless long long term right thanks for watching